Block A and B have masses 15 kilograms and 5 kilograms respectively and rest on a frictionless level surface and 100 newton force is applied to block A which is in contact with block B. We'd like to know what is the force on uh, that block A applies to block B. In other words, what is the normal force on block B from block A? So we have our picture already. But since this is a problem that's going to involve uh, forces and probably Newton's laws, we should go ahead and draw a free body diagram. And actually, there are three different free body diagrams that we could draw because there are three different objects that we could discuss. We could talk about object A or block A, and I'll indicate that here. It has a particular mass. I'm just going to write it down, MA. And what does it feel? It feels a force of gravity pulling down and a normal force from the, uh, from the floor, uh, from the surface, pointing up. But let's, uh, let's neglect that for now since the vertical forces aren't going to be important for this. What we should then realize is that it feels a force to the right, an applied force of 100 newtons. It also feels a force because it's in contact with block B. That force pushes back to the left. That would be the force on block A due to block B. We could draw a different free body diagram, which would be the free body diagram for block B. It feels a force due to its contact with block A. That points to the right. That would be written this way, the force on block B due to block A. Lastly, we could discuss the object that is the combined system of block A and block B. I'll represent that as a dot, and we'll call this object having a mass of block of mass A plus mass B. If you do it that way, it's like treating this entire thing as one object, and that object only feels one horizontal force to the right, and so that would be 100 newtons. And so in fact, there are, there's more than one way to do this problem, but anyway, we've got our free body diagram to indicate the forces that are relevant here. The concepts that we have, or that we might need, We've got at least to deal with forces, we probably are going to need to deal with Newton's laws. And also we have connected objects. Now they're connected because they're touching, but you could have a similar situation where objects are connected by a rope or a cable. It's a similar idea. So those are the concepts. What are the relevant equations that we might need? Well, if we're going to use Newton's laws, we definitely need to use net force equals mass times acceleration, and we we'll only need that in the horizontal direction, so I'll write that as net force in the x direction is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. That is Newton's second law, and I'll write it that way. There's another Newton's law that we might need, and that is the force on object i due to object j, and I'm going to write this as a vector, it's equal and opposite to the force on object J due to object I. That is to say, those two forces have the same magnitude, but they point in opposite directions. That's Newton's third law, and we can make that relevant here. Okay, so let's uh, identify then what we're, what we're going to do, given our diagram and given our equations here. There is more than one way to do this, so let's go ahead and just pick one method. So we're going to try. Let's start with applying um, Newton's second law to the entire system, which is using this diagram here. It's a place to try. A plus B. So the net force in the x direction, we can see it's simply 100 Newtons. The mass of the object is the mass of A and B added together. 15 plus 5 kilograms, that's 20 kilograms. The acceleration is now easy to solve for. Divide by 20, and you learn that 100 over 20, which is 5, 5 meters per second squared, is the acceleration of that system. So I could draw that on the picture here, AX is equal to 5 meters per second squared. The next thing that I could do is 
apply that knowledge to analyze the middle diagram, this one. So let's apply Newton's second law to the middle diagram and see if we can learn something new. The net force acting on object B is what we call FBA. It's the force on B from object A. That's equal to the mass of object B. So that is 5 kilograms. Lastly, what's the acceleration? It's the acceleration of object A. But importantly, since these are connected objects, it has the same acceleration as the system does. So this is also 5 meters per second squared. And so we learn that this must be 25 newtons, which would be our final answer. Of course, we could always check that this works by looking at the first diagram. So let's look at the first diagram and apply Newton's second law to it. What would we say? The net force in the x direction. There are two forces there. 100 newtons pointing to the right and force AB pointing to the left. So I will indicate the direction with a minus sign and put the magnitude of force AB here. That's equal to the mass of object A, which is 15 kilograms. It's multiplied by the acceleration of object A. Again, it has the same acceleration as object B does, and that's 5 meters per second squared. That gives me 75 newtons on the right-hand side. You can subtract the 75 newtons from both sides, and you'll conclude that the force on object A from object B must be equal to 25 newtons. And here's where Newton's third law comes into play. We know that the force on any object by a different object is equal and opposite to that force's object, uh, the force of that object back on, on it. In other words, the force of object A on B is equal and opposite to B on A. Therefore, the magnitudes of these forces should be the same. So FAB should be equal to FBA. That is by Newton's third law which confirms the 25 Newton result.